or let's now try to solve another example. We have example number four. We have a 50 um, millimeter wide steel bar has an actual load applied at point B. So we have actual load at point B, we have which is 80 kilonewton, and we have actual load at point C that is 40 kilonewton. A compression. Take note of this. This compression, and we have actual load at point D which is in tension. Okay, so our goal here is to compute the minimum thickness of the bar that can be used for without exceeding the stress 60 MPa. So what should be the thickness no, of our bar? Again, just like what I told you, the greater the area, the cross-sectional area, the stronger the material would be. Okay, so in order to... Um, to come up with a stress not exceeding 60 MPa, so we should come up with a greater value of thickness. Okay, so in in this point, now take note, we have different actual forces in every point or in every section in our um, bar. Okay, so if we cut our bar at this point, take note, we have different actual we have um, internal actual force no at every section of our bar okay now in that case we have to compute the internal actual force in every section now we have different way or we have um, two approach no in solving the internal actual forces in every section first we can use actual diagram or we can make an actual diagram so so let's try to draw the actual diagram. So act, uh, like what I have said, we have two different approach in computing for the internal actual forces for every section in the bar. But the easiest way in computing the internal forces is by um, drawing or by making an actual diagram. For our sign convention here, all the tensile tension or tensile force has a positive value, okay, and compressive negative value siya. Okay, so let's try to draw. Okay, this is now our diagram. So, if 25 kilonewton, since it is acting away from the, from point D, this one, so therefore it is tensile. So, my positive value siya sa taas, that is, um, here is 25 kilonewton. So, we have 25 kilonewton. So, therefore, if we, we cut a section, within point C and point D so all the internal forces at this point are 25 kilonewton so the same lang so therefore 25 kilonewton ang actual force in between C and D okay now at pagdating ng point C take note we have 240 kilonewton which is compression so therefore it has negative value now in that case we go downward, that is the value here, that is 25 minus 40, and that is what? 25 minus 40, that is negative 15. So we have negative 15 value or internal forces from C to B. Okay, so the internal forces natin from C to B is 15 kilonewton. Okay, now Pagdating naman sa point B, take note, we have tensile force 80 kN. So, it will go up from negative 15. So, therefore, ang mangyayari, it will go up here and that the value here is negative 15 plus 80. Okay, positive since tensile. Okay, that is negative 15 plus 80 that equals to 65. So, all the internal forces from section within section A to B is 65 kilo newton okay so these are the internal forces okay now in order to come up with a safer thickness we need to adapt the greater actual force why it's because ang kung ano yung pinakamalaking actual force yun yung magko-cause ng failure in the bar Okay, again, to, to counteract the forces, so we need to come up with a larger thickness or the larger, a larger cross-sectional area. 
So in that case, our cross-sectional or our internal maximum internal forces is 65. And take note, 65 in that case is in terms of kilonewton. Correct? So now let's use the the normal for stress formula. We have normal stress is equal to P over A. Correct? And our normal stress, okay, the stress in the bar should not exceed 60 MPA or that is 60 Newton per mm squared to 60 Newton per square millimeter is equal to P again we use 65 but since 65 is in terms of kilonewton then we can convert that into Newton so we multiplied it by 1000 and then we come up with 65,000 Newton now for the area since the cross-sectional area is, re in re is rectangular now take note this the thickness and this one is the width of the bar okay so if we if we cut this bar so ang makikita natin is rectangular correct the thickness and the width so since we don't have um, since ang kailangan nating kunin dito is thickness then we retain the variable t now we have the width here that is equals to 50 mm Take note of that. We have 50 mm. So, with here, that is 50 mm. Okay, so, then we have the area here. Our area is thickness times the width. So, our area is thickness times the width. Then, our thick thickness is unknown. Our width here is what? 50 mm. 50 mm. So, the result is in terms of mm or millimeter then we have thickness equal to twenty one point sixty seven millimeter so this is the minimum thickness so that our bar or the stress of our bar would not exceed sixty mpa so we adapt this 21.67 no for the in the entire bar not necessary si 21.67 is within the section lang within a to a to b but we can use 21.67 for uniformity of thickness para the same ang thickness for the entire bar then we use the thickness all throughout as 21.67 mm and now let's try to solve it using other approach. So we have a second approach. So instead of um, creating an actual diagram, then we can actually use cut section. So putting nothing um, e divide ang beam into sections. Okay, so that we can compute for the internal axial force for every section. Okay, let's try to solve. Now in this case, we could have three three sections so we can first cut at at c to d so let's say that is um, section one one okay now in section one one we have if we um, separate or isolate this section then we could have a um, 25 kilonewton force acting away this one and we have the imaginary um, internal force that is let's say that is p between c to d okay that is um, section one one so we can sum up to, to determine for pcd then we can sum up um, forces horizontally we have summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero all the force acting to the right are positive now in that case you only have one force acting to the right that is 25 kilonewton and we have also one force acting to the left that is pcd and since to the left sha then it has a negative value so negative pcd okay and that equals to zero so therefore our all the actual force within c to d is equal to transpose 25 so it is positive 25 so that we have 25 kilonewton so this is the internal force at c to d 
Now, let's try to um, cut at this point here. So, we have section 2, 2. Okay? So, in section 2, 2, no, ito yung free body diagram. Okay? So, we have 25 kilonewton at point D. Now, at point C here, take note this D, meron siyang what? 40 kilonewton, correct? Kasali na si point C, point C, kasi since, joint, uh, since we move our section in between B to C, so 40 kilonewton would be included. Okay, now, in this case, we have what? Forces, or we have internal, internal actual force. Now, in this case, we do not know yet kung saan papunta or anong direction ng actual force. But, we can still assume. If we come up with a negative result, then we have wrong assumption. Okay? So, let's try to assume that it is um, acting that way to the right. So, we have, let's say that is um, P, B, C. Then, we can sum up forces. Sum up forces horizontal equal to 0, to the right is positive, and that is 25 uh, mino, uh, minus 40, then we have plus PBC is equal to 0. Then we have PBC here that equals to 15, positive 15, correct? So we have positive 15 kilonewton. So that is the actual, the internal actual force in between B and C. So, it's the same with the actual diagram that we drew, okay? So, we have negative 15 kilonewton. Since it is negative, why is it negative? Since it is compression. Now, take note in our diagram, PBC is acting towards the cross-sectional area, okay? So, therefore, so, therefore, ano, it is compression. Okay, so we have compression. Well, PCD, that is tension. Okay, now we can compute for um, internal forces in between A and B. So, what we need to do here is to draw a section, or that is, let's say that is section 3-3. Three, three. Now, in that case, we have section 3-3. Three, three. Then, let's draw the free body diagram. Now, in that case, we have 25 kilonewton here. We have 40 kilonewton. We also have 80 kilonewton. Tama? And we also have here a force. Let's say, um, let's assume that it acts to the left. So, we have P, A, B. So, this is the internal actual force at the section A, B. So, in that case, we can say, we can sum up forces horizontal to the right is positive. We have 25 acting to the right. We have minus 40 since it acts to the left. And we have 80. 80 is to the right. So, we have plus, plus 80. Then, P, A, B is acting Okay, acting towards the left. So, we have minus PAB and that equals to 0. So, our PAB here in this case is equal to what? 65. The internal force, no? this is tension, correct? Since positive, that is tension. This is now the internal force for section AB. Now, again, since we are dealing with the minimum thickness, or safer thickness, so, we adapt 65 kilonewton to compute for the thickness. So, let's um, again proceed now to the formula or the, the stress, normal stress formula. So, we use 65 kilonewton. Okay, so that's it for the normal stress. Thank you guys for listening.